What is a fuzzy? Is it a food? Can I eat it? Why are there so many fighting game terms with the word fuzzy in the name? Can you really fit a whole universe inside one of these things? The answers to all these questions and more coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, for real though, I am going to show you what a fuzzy is. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to explain what the universal fuzzy is. I'm going to explain what situations you need to look out for these things in. And overall, just give you a good idea of what these are, when they come into play, and how to do them, and whether or not they're a big deal. And I felt that covering this topic like this, in this sort of format, would be a little bit easier, because I can walk you through it a little bit better, and maybe ease some of your concerns about whether it's too strong, or whether you need to learn it, or anything like that. If you're just here to learn how to do a fuzzy in the first place, or you just want to know how to do the universal fuzzy, I'll have timestamps in the description so you can skip to any part of the video you want. But I do think it'd be helpful for you to watch the whole thing. Okay, so what is a fuzzy in the first place? Well, the idea... Actually, let me just show you really quick. Just because uh, showing sometimes is a little bit easier than telling. And you saw we overheaded him while he was standing there. This is um, not something that's very intuitive for newer players to fighting games, but this is actually something that's in almost every fighting game. And the concept is that when you're in block stun, you can't change whether you're standing or blocking until the block stun is over. We can demonstrate this really well by using base Goku's assist as an example, just because it has a lot of block stun and it's a single hit. So if we block it standing and we try to switch to crouching, we actually can't until it's over. If you look on the left side of the screen, you can see I'm mashing down while in block stun. And until the block stun is over, I can't actually switch to down backing. This doesn't mean that we aren't blocking low though. So if we record this where Bardock is using a low, we can still block low. Blocked at standing, we can still block low. So even though we're blocking low, our character is still standing up. This lets us go for a fast overhead that might not reach a crouching character otherwise. So if we have Android 16 on the screen, he's a pretty tall dude, but we still can't hit him with our rising jump L when he's crouching. But if he's standing, then we can. And we can actually get a combo with some characters as well. Like that. So how do we take advantage of this? Or how do we get them to be blocking low while they're standing? That's what a fuzzy is. That's, that's basically what we're trying to achieve whenever we do this sort of thing. And most commonly, you're going to see this happen after a snap. If you want to make sure you're doing this right, set the bot to either guard all or guard first only, and then set them to crouch and don't switch. This means that they're not going to switch whether they're trying to block low or block high. And since they're set to crouch, they're trying to block low. And the most basic example you're going to see is probably with Bardock against a tall character. You can do this to probably a third of the cast, somewhere around there. The reason you're going to see this after a snap most often is because when you block something in the air, not only does it force you into standing blocks done when you do land, it adds a lot of extra recovery that you wouldn't have if you blocked on the ground. So the idea is we're forcing someone into standing block stun, and while they're trying to block low, we're able to instant overhead their tall standing hurt box. This isn't to be confused with fuzzy guard options, which refer to how you choose to delay your defensive options. I briefly touch on this in my Broly guide, and we'll probably go into more detail on that in its own video another time. It is a little bit confusing that there's multiple fighting game terms that both have fuzzy in the name. We have fuzzy overheads, and we have fuzzy defensive options like fuzzy jump, fuzzy mash, stuff like that. Um, it is a little bit confusing. They're both also kind of higher level concepts, and you'll generally just need to know which one people are talking about based on context. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. We're talking about the instant overhead fuzzy. And boy, can a lot of characters do it. So Bardock's the obvious example. He can do it to a lot of characters. Let's give ourselves a secondary character to fuzzy here. Let's, um, let's actually show how small of a character can get fuzzied. Let's get ourselves Frieza here, just as another example of a character that can get fuzzied. Surprisingly, Frieza can get fuzzied, even though he's super short, but um, that's actually because his hurt box is really tall when he's in block stun. He's not normally tall on his own. If he's just standing here, we actually... Oh, he is actually tall enough on his own. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't expect Frieza to be able to get fuzzied. But he is apparently tall enough when he is actually standing. 
to get fuzzied by some characters. Well, let's uh, swap out Bardock. Let's show we can do it with other characters as well. Team Gohan. We can even do it with like Super Saiyan Goku. Of course, a lot of characters can get this going. Even characters with a jump L that doesn't look like it hits very far down can still do this against the really tall characters. You can kind of get an idea of why people are so worried about fuzzies in general if they have a tall character because it seems like it's a really, really strong mix-up. And I'm not saying it isn't, but people do, people do get really concerned about having one or two tall characters on a team and they think it's a really, really big negative aspect to playing a character. Which, again, it's totally understandable if, if that's your opinion. If that's how you feel, that's super understandable because these are really good mix-ups. Generally though, these sorts of things are only a really big deal with the characters that actually get a meterless combo from it as well. So if you can't actually convert into a combo, these fuzzies aren't a huge deal. The most common time that you're going to see a fuzzy is after a snap, but there's other times it'll come up as well. As long as they block in the air, I might be plus enough to go for it in a regular situation like this. This makes up teching a really scary idea if you're a really tall character against someone like Team Gohan or Bardock. Anytime you can fuzzy, you can set up a true 50-50 high-low mix-up. And a lot of people like to guess on the fuzzy and just block high, but that's a really scary idea because if you take the low hit, you might just die for it. If you have the health to spare and you're in this situation and you don't feel like sparking or you don't have spark available, it's probably better to take the high most of the time. Maybe once in a while show that you're willing to guess high, but if you get hit by the low, you're probably going to die, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> Alright, so moving on to the universal fuzzy really quick. What is the universal fuzzy? It's the same idea of someone being stuck in standing block stun, except this is something that's going to work on characters that are too short to get hit by the rising jump L. So I'm going to use Adult Gohan here because he's by far the easiest character to show this off with. And let's actually get a second short character just to show that this works on anyone. So let's get GT Goku. Let's get, I don't know, Team Gohan. And again, we're going to set them to crouch, guard first only, don't switch. And there we go. So that didn't actually look like the other fuzzy. The other fuzzy, we went for a rising overhead. With this one, we're actually doing an instant air dash L. And this is definitely not as fast, but it's still super quick. It's still very difficult to react to and still very strong. So how is this any different than just doing a regular instant air dash mix up where we just do instant air dash L? We can hit with the fastest possible instant air dash L if we do the universal fuzzy. So you can see in standard dash L is pretty quick, but it doesn't seem to connect, right? Even if they're standing, I don't think it's going to hit on the first frame. But characters blocking standing hurtbox is taller than normal, so we can actually hit with this jump L sooner than if we just did a regular air dash. If we do it regularly, we have to kind of delay it to make sure that it connects, which adds a lot of time, makes it a lot more reactable. But if we can do just a regular instant air dash, in the universal fuzzy it's significantly faster now seriously like try blocking this it's actually pretty difficult it, it is technically reactable but it is very difficult to react to and the moment you throw anything else into the mix like you just run up and go low you throw a dragon rush in there if you're adult gohan you do jump into fast fall the moment you add anything else into the mix defending is going to become super difficult the universal fuzzy is technically something that players like goichi have been using for a really long time they were just using a different version of it before, where before they were using an assist like Goku's assist or any, really any assist to keep someone locked into the air for a while. And then they could time a fast instant air dash L as they land on the ground and they're forced into that standing state. Just like that. And that is really quick. Like you can just see that is super quick. And of course, don't forget to go low sometimes. And have fun with that. 
The universal fuzzy that we're all familiar with now is essentially the same exact thing, it just lets us do it without having to spend that assist. And you can actually do it with a lot of characters, you'll have to look up how your specific character sets it up. But in general, what we're aiming for is to be plus enough on our snap setup that we're at least plus 20, plus 21. So if you go to info display settings and you go to attack startup and frame advantage info, turn that on, you can see um, your frame advantage on anything. So we see our 5L is minus two on block, our 2L is zero on block. Can you believe Adult Gohan has a zero on block normal? That's messed up, uh, not related to what we're talking about. So the frame advantage that we're looking for is plus 21, 20. So 21 parentheses 20, that's what we're looking for. Anything less than this isn't enough. Um, some characters can actually get more, but generally this is like the max you're gonna be able to get. And if you don't have this number, then you're messing up. So before you practice the universal fuzzy, double check that you have this number correct. Otherwise you're gonna have an issue. The other thing we need, because it's a little more complicated than just being plus 21 and then doing an instant air dash, we also need to micro dash instant air dash. It's weird that that's what we have to do, but you can actually jump a little bit quicker after landing if you cancel your landing recovery with a dash. So that's why we're doing it. This makes it kind of annoying to learn, but once you get it down, it's not too hard. So what you can do is if you go to your button settings, check simple dash and just turn that to normal. If you have it set to this, that means that you can't dash using the super dash macro. So if you have simple dash set to normal, what this means is that you have a dash macro built into the game. If you hit super dash, obviously you get super dash. But if you hold forward and hit super dash, your character dashes normally. This is to help people who maybe aren't comfortable with double tapping for all their dashes. But it's super valuable for the universal macro. I would recommend mapping this to a button and plinking this with your pinky or something anytime that you have to go for it. So again, uh, all we're really trying to do is be plus 21, micro dash, instant air dash, and then go for our overhead jump L all as fast as possible. If you're having trouble getting it, one thing that really helped me out is timing the dash macro actually a lot sooner than you think, even before you hit the ground. I'll do it as soon as I see the jump M make contact at the end of my string here. I didn't wait till I saw Gohan land, I just saw the jump M make contact while I was still in the air, dash macro, instant air dash, jump LM. Also, you're gonna have trouble with this if you aren't comfortable doing fast instant air dashes. An instant air dash isn't just jumping and dashing as fast as possible, where you maybe hit neutral up and then dash as fast as possible. This isn't really what we're trying to do. You can see how high I'm going before I do this. Instant air dash means that we're just tapping up forward, going to neutral, and then tapping forward again. Up forward, neutral, forward. And I think we can even turn this on with the joystick virtual controller. It's, we can kind of see this easier with the virtual controller we're holding up forward, neutral forward, up forward, neutral forward. I'm doing it too slow for it to actually show, but that's what we're trying to do. If you know number pad notation, just look at your calculator or your number pad on your keyboard and you'll see it's nine, five, six, up forward, neutral forward. And if you do it really quick, this is what you get. Whoops, yeah. And this is a really important skill in most anime games if you're trying to get good at them. It's really helpful. So if you're newer to anime games and you haven't been doing this, this is really important as well. You need to know this. So again, we're gonna try to set up being plus 21, plus 20. Just like that. And then we are going to micro dash, instant air dash, and jump L. Then we're good to go. just like that. And once you get good at this, you can mix in other mix-ups as well. You know, fake out into low, or if someone hasn't been reacting to it, they might start guessing. So then you just run up and go low. And that's super rewarding as well. You could do it with a 2M and just obliterate your opponents if they don't actually block it, because a 2M is going to be a fantastic starter. All right, so that's how you do the universal fuzzy. Hopefully that didn't take too long. And hopefully I explained that well. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to answer them down below. And again, if you're messing it up, then double check that the setup you're using is actually plus 20, plus 21. Adult Gohan is a really good example of a character that can do this really easily if you want to practice just because he has a setup that's auto-timed. 
His setup is completely auto-timed where he just jumps back and does a jump M and then he does air dash LLM and he's good to go. Other characters might actually have to eyeball it and manually time it. Yeah, but his just auto times itself. If we were to use Team Gohan, the most common setup actually isn't auto timed. Like if I just do this as fast as possible, I'm plus 20, plus 19, and you'll kind of have to practice manually adjusting it so that you do get the plus 21, plus 20. And this actually makes it a lot more difficult for some characters than others. There is a way to auto time it usually with any character, but you gotta get creative. What I'm using with uh, Team Gohan is I hit 5M and I super jump instant air dash LLM, which is significantly more difficult to do if it's not uh, muscle memory that you've already built up. And honestly, this is probably my least favorite thing about the Universal Fuzzy is how it takes a lot of practice to um, actually set up. It's not super intuitive. It's easy to mess up for a lot of characters. And even though it kind of evens the playing field in the sense that now every character can get fuzzied in a way, and not only tall characters are the ones getting actually punished for their height, it's still just so unintuitive and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of knowledge to actually set up and learn how to do. It's not something that you're going to watch as a new viewer and instantly understand what's going on. And that's probably what I dislike about it the most. So what do I actually think about it? Do I think it's too too good? Broken? Is it overpowered? Does it ruin the game? Well, I don't think it really ruins the game for a few reasons. First of all, I think it's completely optional. I don't think it's completely necessary to have really good mix-up in a snap situation. I think there's so much good mix-up you can do that's pretty much universal to almost every character. I don't think the universal fuzzy makes that situation that's already like 95% terrible for your opponent, now you're making it 100% terrible for your opponent. It's it's like the difference between an A and an A+. I don't think it drastically changes the way you play the game. Another thing is, it's reactable. It is very difficult to react to, but it is reactable. So you can actually practice against it, and if you actually go back and watch Goichi play with Sonic Fox, um, in a recent Grand Finals, actually, I guess it's already been a couple months, Sonic Fox reset the bracket and won, and Goichi went for the Universal Fuzzy a bunch, and Sonic Fox blocked it, I think, every single time. It's definitely something you can do with practice. In fact, let's actually practice a little bit right now. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is recorded... I've recorded the Universal Fuzzy on slot 4, I've recorded a low option on 5, a different low option on 6, and a Dragon Rush just for good measure on 7. And let's see if we can defend against it pretty well. And let's set these to play back at random. I'm gonna put number four on two. It'll show up twice as many times in the random playback as everything else, because that's what we're practicing against. Now let's see how we do. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I have to take the Dragon Rush. That's how all these setups are gonna start. And I got hit. <laughs> no! All right, let me practice a bit. I'll get this. Oh, wow. I'm getting bodied here. <laughs> it's apparently pretty good. Alright, block the low, but I'm I'm holding I'm committing to low and I'm gonna react high. Got it that time. Alright. <laughs> okay, the dragon rush will get me every time. But the high low we can get better at defending against. Every time. <laughs> But I guess my point is, this is something that's very difficult to react to, but it is technically possible. So you could, in theory, improve at this over time. The more you see it, the more you practice against it. But this is another thing I kind of dislike about it, is that it's hard to practice against it. It's hard to practice against it unless you learn how to do it yourself. Because how are you going to set this up to record properly in training mode until you actually learn how to do it, record the setup properly a few times, record some low options to go along with it, some other mix-ups. And in general, the, the point of this being something that is difficult to react to, you need to put so much focus and effort into reacting to it, means that anything else like Dragon Rush, um, any other kind of mix-up, a command grab, is probably going to work every time, if your character has those as options. And the last thing that makes me feel like this isn't um, too big of a deal is also just how easy it is to mess up. Adult Gohan is basically the poster boy for the Universal Fuzzy, just because he is so... 
um, good at doing it. His setup auto times it. He gets good reward for doing it. He's he's just really good at doing it. But other characters might have to manually time their setups, or the setups that aren't manually timed aren't as easy as just doing jump back M into air dash LL. Um, if you happen to mess up, it's actually kind of scary. Like you can just die. So a lot of people have this. A lot of people who don't even know what's going on will like try to 2H it without realizing that it's a true block string. Let's purposely mess up the setup here. So what's gonna happen if you mess up the setup is the jump L is gonna whiff on a crouching opponent. And in this situation, maybe they'll hit a button before you do and win in the scramble, and then combo you and take you to the corner or something like that. Or maybe they just guess with 2H. You know, a lot of people don't understand how this works and they think they can 2H it even if they usually can't. Or maybe they'll just walk out of the corner. This is actually something I think Tachikawa was experimenting with where he just holds forward and hopes they mess up. If they happen to mess up, then he gets out of the corner, probably gets a combo. And even if they do it right, technically, they will still block because you can block either direction as long as it's a true block string. And if you're doing it right, then it's a true block string. So holding forward is still standing. They'll still stand block the universal fuzzy. So if we go back to the proper uh, recorded option was number four. So let's set it to random and have it play back both the correct recording and the incorrect recording. And I'm just gonna hold forward and show that we can block either one. So if he does the incorrect one, we just kind of get out. And if he does the correct one, we still block. Although I have to block low when he lands, but you get the idea. But again, I think the biggest point for why I don't think the Universal Fuzzy is an enormous deal, um, at least in general, I don't think it's a huge, huge, huge game changer, just because any situation when you could do the Universal Fuzzy, your opponent was probably screwed anyway. Like, let's be honest. If, if I could do the Universal Fuzzy, then I could do a 50-50 mix-up with so many different options. Okay, so I could go for a 50-50 with Team Gohan's EX Legs where I do an air dash once it's over, fill the gap with an assist and go high, or I don't do the air dash and I land and go low. That's a 50-50. The same idea works from like any snap, even without the legs. You can set up these kind of mix-ups with almost any character just by filling the gap after you make them block in the air with an assist, and then on the way down, you air dash into a high or you land and go low. the high and that's the low there's already really good almost universal mix-up that almost every character can get from a snap and even if your opponent happens to guess right they probably still have a lot of other options while the opponent doesn't have any defensive options they can't guard cancel because they just were snapped so even if they happen to guess right I might just set up another mix-up right afterwards or I can stagger, get my assist back, and then go for regular mix-up afterwards, which is already a really nice reward. The vast majority of players can get opened up by that kind of thing anyway. So do I think fuzzies and universal fuzzies are too strong? Not really. So the way I see it, especially with the universal fuzzy, they're pretty easy to mess up, and they only work in a specific situation that the opponent has to have already earned, where they're basically trading a bad situation for a slightly worse situation for the opponent. In my mind, that's not as huge of a difference as a tool that might help me win neutral most of the time. The way I see it, if you want to set up the universal fuzzy or even a regular fuzzy, if your character can do it, then you need to have one neutral, you need to probably combo the opponent into the corner, and you need to combo into a snap somehow, usually a grounded snap specifically. And honestly, if you've already done those things, your opponent's probably already kind of screwed, uh, let's be honest. Like, all you're doing is trading a really bad situation for them for an even worse situation for them. Either way, you were probably going to get another hit anyway, assuming you were already good with your mix-up. So that's kind of where I land on it, but um, I do understand that the situation is very strong. But again, even if the fuzzy was completely taken off the table, there's still so many other mix-up options available. If they have an assist available, then they can probably mix you up with the universal falling mix-up that we talked about. Even, you know, Goku can do it pretty easily. Just like that. You know, you're gonna have to figure out how to time it with your assist, but it's worth learning. Um, other high-low mix-up is available. 
Dragon Rush is available. If you're mid-screen, you have left-right mix-up, or obviously the reactable cross-up, or the same side super dash. If you do think that fuzzies are too powerful and really strong, and you have a real bad case of the if you can't beat them, join them's, but the characters you like to play can't do fuzzies, can't do the universal fuzzy, or you know maybe you just don't want to learn it, there are a lot of other good mix-ups there, and I do really encourage you to learn how your character's basic high-low mix-up with assist can work after a snap, because those are so strong. There is one messed up thing I do want to show you though that I don't think I've seen people talk about a lot. Even watching Wawa play and commentators who do know uh, as much or more about the game than me uh, don't seem to catch on to this. Base Goku Assist is super good for setting up essentially universal fuzzies in regular block strings. This, this assist is actually messed up. So let's go and just... I recorded something really quickly. So if you block the 6M, Base Goku Assist has so much block stun on a single hit that if you time it at the same time as the 6M, it just forces them into standing block stun for a long time, letting you go for a super fast instant air dash jump L. This jump L would have whiffed if not for Base Goku Assist. And you essentially get the Universal Fuzzy as a mix-up option anywhere on the screen, all you have to do is hit 6M and call base Goku. That's actually messed up. I just wanted to share that because it's been on my mind. <laughs> this assist is super good. This assist is like bonkers. I think it's super good. Um, obviously, I think people know it's good, but I think it's even better than a lot of people think. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to cover for this. I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood what fuzzies were, if you didn't already know. Fuzzies really do apply to every fighting game in some capacity, except for specific cases like Under Night and Birth, where they actively built in mechanics to the game to take them out, where if you're doing a rising attack, like you're on the way up in the air, you can't actually hit overhead in that game, which is a, an interesting design choice. A lot of games don't care though, even in Street Fighter, they're pretty prevalent just because you can fuzzy a character to get stun and then get a full combo and KO them. Um, fuzzies are, are a really common thing, but I think a lot of people or a lot of newer players don't understand what they are. I'm happy we could talk about that and get some people up to speed, hopefully. Hopefully this video could help you out in one way or another. If it did and you want to continue learning DBFC with me, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel or follow me on Twitch where I'll be streaming semi-regularly. Uh, feel free to ask me questions in there if you'd like. This isn't what my usual content is, usually it's a bit more polished, constructed videos, but for this particular video and for this particular topic, I felt that being able to walk through it with you guys would be really beneficial, so this is what I chose to do. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys next time.